This video is brought to you by Hoodbeast.com. Design your own custom hoodies. Hoodbeast.com. Throughout NBA history, there has been a common misconception that a majority of NBA players had a rough childhood. Many fans tend to believe that they all came from nothing, the good old rags to riches story. However, that is simply not true. As a matter of fact, most NBA players actually grew up in a fairly financially stable environment. So when you hear about a player that spent most of his childhood struggling with gangs, violence, drugs, poverty, and much more, just know that it does not apply to a majority of the league. However, this is not to say that there aren't any players out there who have struggled to get to where they are today. There are a good handful of athletes that practically came from nothing and when I say nothing, I literally mean nothing. Some of these players came from difficult family backgrounds, threatening neighborhoods, or just simply a difficult lifestyle of poverty. Luckily for them, they can put all that behind considering the fact that they now play for the NBA. The average NBA player salary this year is around $4.6 million. This means that even the 7th or 8th guy on the roster is doing extremely well for himself. So for these players, money is not an issue anymore. Anymore. In fact, it can actually be argued that they are now in a position of dominance and power. They now have the means that they worked so hard for in the past. That's what makes the classic rags to riches story so influential. It shows us that with hard work and dedication, anything is possible. With all that being said, today we will be taking a glimpse at NBA players who went from poverty to power. Welcome to NBA Insider. Westbrook shows from the basketball. Goes to the rim. Before we begin, I would like to give a huge shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. For those of you who don't know what SeatGeek is, it's basically the smartest way to buy and sell tickets to live events. You can use SeatGeek to find tickets to concerts, Broadway, comedy shows, and even the NBA Finals. SeatGeek searches for tickets all over the web, which means that you'll see far more results and find better deals than if you tried searching on your own, saving you both time and money. To top it off, you guys can use my promo code INSIDER17 to get $20 off your first purchase. Click the link in the description box down below to find out more. Once again, thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Enjoy! Life for NBA superstar Carmelo Anthony wasn't exactly the easiest. Carmelo was born on May 29, 1984 in the Red Hook projects of Brooklyn, New York. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Red Hook was considered one of the worst neighborhoods in the country due to its crack epidemic. When he was just two years old, Melo's father passed away from liver failure due to cancer, leaving him and his mother to struggle for a few years. As a child, Carmelo also struggled with asthma attacks up until his teenage years. When he was just eight years old, Anthony and his his remaining family, including his mother, moved to a rough neighborhood in the inner city of Baltimore. It was there that he became exposed to violence, prostitution, and drugs. Although the environment around him was pretty tough, Mary, Anthony's mother, kept Carmelo on a short leash. She made sure that Carmelo was always focused on his education. Although Anthony began playing basketball at a young age, it wasn't until he was cut from his high school team as a freshman that he started to seriously focus on his game. By his sophomore season, Anthony had grown five additional inches and brought to the court a level of talent that made him a local star. College coaches from around the country took notice of his talents and by his junior year, Anthony had committed to play for Syracuse University. But in order to meet the school's academic requirements, Anthony transferred to Oak Hill Academy where he eventually raised his test scores and his game while becoming the highest ranked high school player in the country. Unlike other top high school players like LeBron James and Kobe Bryant, Anthony felt he wasn't ready to skip college and jump straight to the NBA. Instead, he kept his commitment to Syracuse and entered the school as a freshman freshman in the fall of 2002. At Syracuse University, he quickly adapted himself to the college game and led the team to its first ever NCAA tournament title in 2003. His impressive college performance sent him to declare in the 2003 NBA draft where he went third overall to the Denver Nuggets and became an overall productive scorer. With a professional basketball career that has spanned a little over 13 years, Carmelo Anthony has developed his on-court skills while growing his net worth as well. Since then, he has become a superstar and is getting paid like one too. He is currently playing for the Oklahoma City Thunder alongside Russell Westbrook and Paul George where he is making roughly $24.5 million a season. He also earns between $8 to $10 million each year through various endorsements. As a matter of fact, according to CelebrityNetWorth.com, as of May of 2017, Anthony's net worth is estimated to be roughly $90 million. Carmelo has single-handedly taken his rough childhood and turned it into his motivation to be greater than he was the day before. He literally turned nothing into something. A great accomplishment indeed.
On September 15, 2017, NBA player Mirza Toledovic celebrated his birthday. Although turning 32 years old is enough reason to celebrate, Mirza Toledovic has an even greater reason to. Due to the fact that many of us live in countries that are not at war, we are not able to grasp or understand the feeling of living in a country that is at war. Mirza Toledovic understands that feeling. He grew up in Bosnia during the Bosnian War of the 1990s. When he was just 7 years old, Yugoslavia, a 50-year-old country, split into roughly half a dozen new ones, causing a violent war that lasted from 1992 up until 1995. The outcome of that war was extremely horrendous. The death toll reached nearly 200,000 victims and was a combination of both soldiers and civilians. At one point, it became so disturbing that Mirza's parents would often come home to inform the family of the death of another family member or a friend as if it was something normal. For Mirza, losing people close to him was fairly common. As if that wasn't bad enough, aside from the grenades and bullets that would shower down on the city daily, food was hard to come by, making survival hard each and every day. However, Mirza managed to survive and began playing sports to escape from the harsh realities of his life. Basketball specifically was an extremely interesting sport for him. He would play for hours and hours, stopping only when he was too exhausted to play or when the emergency siren signaled another attack was about to strike. Despite knowing the dangers of his environment, he would still go out each and every day to brush up on his skills, literally willing to risk his life for the sport. When he was 15 years old, he would sign his first professional basketball contract. Teletovic, however, however, was clearly too good for the competition, averaging nearly 30 points per game. He then decided to play in Belgium, where he took his talents to the Spanish League. In 2007, following a successful career in the Spanish League, Mirza declared for the NBA draft, but would unfortunately go undrafted. Despite this, he decided to concentrate even more on improving his game. The fruits of his labor would eventually pay off, as he would end up getting drafted by the Brooklyn Nets in July of 2012. Today, Mirza Teletovic is playing as a power forward for the Milwaukee Bucks on a three-year, $31 million deal. This is especially amazing considering the fact that he literally came from nothing. Very few NBA players have a story like that of Minnesota Timberwolves small forward Jimmy Butler. Born on September 14, 1989, Butler grew up in Tomville, Texas, a small town approximately 40 miles from Houston with a population of less than 10,000 people. As a baby, his father abandoned the family, leaving him and his mother behind. As if that wasn't bad enough, when he was just 13 years old, his own mother kicked him out of the house by simply telling him, I don't like the look of you, you gotta go. With no place to stay and no money in his pockets, Butler was forced to find shelter where he could. He ended up staying with a couple of close friends but bounced around from house to house while playing basketball to escape the pain and suffering that was boiling up inside of him. Luckily for him, his life completely changed when he met Jordan Leslie in high school and the two instantly became friends. After hearing his story, Jordan's family eventually took Jimmy in and made him a part of their family. Grateful for the opportunity, Jimmy immediately took advantage of his situation and began working on his game. When he didn't receive attention from any major colleges, he enrolled at Tyler Jr. College college where he flourished and eventually earned an offer from Marquette. The rest as the saying goes is history. Butler is now one of the best players in the NBA. He is currently making roughly $17.5 million this season as a shooting guard and small forward for the Minnesota Timberwolves. For someone who started off his life as a homeless teenager, Jimmy Butler has fought extremely hard to get to where he is today and deserves everything that is coming his way. 24-year-old Memphis Grizzlies shooting guard Ben McLemore is another great example of an individual who came from nothing. For those of you who do not know about his journey to the NBA, let me assure you, it was not simple by any means. Ben McLemore was born on February 11, 1993. Growing up in the poverty-stricken town of Wellston, Missouri, Ben was raised by a single mother who would often work late nights to put food on the table. His family lived in a 600-square-foot apartment that was shared with as many as 10 other family members night after night. As if that wasn't bad enough, Enough, the only bed in the house had three legs with the other corner supported by a pile of books. The family relied on candles when the electricity was turned off and they turned on the stove and a kerosene heater to stay warm in the winter. But in their eyes, this was home. For Ben and his family, money and food were not easy to come by. Sometimes he would go almost two days without food. In fact, going to school was the only time McLemore had a chance to eat free food and when his high school was shut down, he was left to starve. It became so bad that he was willing to make a living by any means. Unfortunately, for him, his younger brother had that same mentality which led to him being sentenced to prison for 15 years for a robbery leaving Ben and his mother to struggle even more than before. With all the struggles that he was facing throughout his life, Ben grew up focusing on finding ways to eat and make some money instead of worrying about sports. But somewhere along the way, he learned basketball and perfected his game. Although he would sometimes be starving, he would still go out and work on his game. In his mind, he knew he had to do it to help out his family. Luckily for him, it ended up paying off. With his basketball, 
basketball gifts and the support of his coaches, Ben made it to Oak Hill Academy followed by Kansas University where he became an NCAA icon. In the 2013 NCAA tournament, McLemore was so popular on the college courts that his jersey sold millions. Each day, Adidas, the company that sponsored Kansas University, would receive a fat paycheck from sales profits of McLemore's jersey. However, due to player college regulations, the NCAA did not pay any of that money to McLemore, allowing all the profits to be acquired by Adidas and the university. Because of this, his family continued to live in hardship. Going to the NBA draft as soon as possible was the only way out for McLemore, and so he did. The craziest part about all of this was the fact that even as he was heading into the 2013 NBA draft, there were up to 15 family members including nephews and nieces that were still living in his 600 square foot home. Luckily for him, he was selected by the Sacramento Kings in the first round. With the seventh pick in the 2013 NBA draft, the Sacramento Kings select Ben McLemore from the University of Kansas. He is currently signed to the Memphis Grizzlies on a two-year $10.6 million deal including $10.6 guaranteed and an annual average salary of $5.3 million. From going to his high school in search of his daily meals to now being guaranteed millions of dollars, Ben McLemore's story is definitely a great example of a player who went from a state of poverty to a status of power. It wouldn't be right of me if I had just ended this list without mentioning one of the ultimate rags to riches story. The kid from Akron who later on became known to many as LeBron James is one of the most powerful athletes in the world. So powerful in fact that his nickname is literally King James. And although most fans know about the story of his rise to power, it is nevertheless an impressive one. LeBron Ramon James was born on December 30th, 1984 in Akron, Ohio. The identity of his father was and still is a mystery to him considering that he was not in his life. In fact, to this day, no one truly knows who his real father is. Due to this, LeBron's mother, Gloria James, who was only 16 years old when she had him, struggled to raise him alone. Gloria had her own struggles as well after her mother passed away when LeBron was still a baby. On top of that, her lack of a steady job and income meant that she and her son had to move from one project to another in Akron's rougher neighborhoods while living on welfare. They found themselves constantly moving between apartments and never being able to settle down. In fact, between the ages of 5 and 8, LeBron had moved a total of 12 times. By 4th grade, James had already spent two-thirds of his life essentially without a home. Because of this, he would miss nearly 100 days of school. But there was a good reason behind all of this. Despite the fact that the main reason for the constant moving was so that his mother could search for work, it was also so that she could protect LeBron from the streets of Akron which was and still is dominated by drugs, gangs, and violence. Gloria started taking whatever job she could find to help pay the bills and put food on the table. However, it just wasn't enough. In the summer of 1993, things got so bad to the point where LeBron's mother sent him to live with the family of a coach hoping to give him a more stable life. Gloria herself ended up joining James and the two moved in with the football football instructor when he was 9 years old. LeBron James eventually turned to sports as an outlet for everything boiling up inside of him and it allowed for him to escape the pain and suffering that he felt as a child. At first, that sport was football. Despite the fact that he dominated as a receiver, he would later on switch to basketball. It made sense considering the fact that his mom gave him a mini hoop and basketball when he was a baby and he would amuse himself for hours each day. From an early age, LeBron showed tremendous instincts for basketball. By 8th grade, James had developed into an outstanding athlete. In addition to to his natural speed, quickness, and strength, he grew to 6 feet and could play all 5 positions. On top of this, he was ambidextrous which meant that he could play with either hand. It didn't take long for LeBron to gain recognition. In 1999, he was recruited by St. Vincent St. Marie High School to play for the Fighting Irish. He was immediately regarded as a top recruit and varsity star. After dominating the high school scene, James decided to skip college and enter the 2003 NBA draft. His home team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, ended up signing the power powerful young forward as a first pick and he proved to be a valuable addition to the struggling franchise. Since then, LeBron James has continued to wreak havoc in the NBA and is widely considered to be the best, if not one of the best NBA players of all time. Today, LeBron James has earned a ridiculous amount of wealth and fame. This season alone, he is scheduled to make $33.2 million. He also signed a $1 billion lifetime deal with Nike, cashed out on a $30 million deal in Beats by Dre, and his equity in Blaze Pizza is at $35 million from a less than $1 million investment. It's only a matter of time before he becomes a billionaire. To top it off, he has been ranked as one of America's most influential and popular athletes, has been featured in books, documentaries, television commercials, and much more. Once a young kid from the streets of Akron, Ohio with no future, now a three-time NBA champion and professional basketball
basketball player who has earned millions, it's safe to say that the day LeBron James retires, he will especially be able to reminisce the old days of his childhood and ultimately have the satisfying thought that he has finally made it. If you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on social media and turn on your post notifications to be notified when I upload. If you are interested in seeing a part 2 of this video or anything such as interesting stories or other NBA topics, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. As always, thanks for watching, NBA Insider.